We give you praise and we give you glory. We bless your holy name and we honor you. Our very present help in time of need. You have been our help from ages past. Presently, you are our help. And there's nothing we can do in the future without your help. So we lift up our eyes unto the Lord. And our help is in the name of the Lord. And our help is the Lord. We thank you that you are dependable. You are consistent in all of your ways. You are faithful. We honor you this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you are all welcome to church this beautiful Sunday morning. If you are joining us online, you are welcome to the Eschen Family Church. And we are glad to have fellowship with you through the medium of technology. God bless you for joining us. I want to talk to you this morning and I believe that what I'm about to share with you will be a great blessing to you. I want to encourage everyone here that what I shared with you last week Sunday what I'm about to share with you and what I will share next week and the week after, there will be four. I want you to pull them together and the, the multimedia team will be making the four messages available in a pack for you. And I want to encourage you to, to listen to them again and again and again the rest of the year. I believe that they are words that will guide us into all of the perfect will of God for us in this year. Please do that. You'll be blessed. Amen. Don't quench the spirit is the title of my sermon this morning. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 And let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can underline not grow weary while doing good. We are spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. We are multidimensional. And uh, the real you and the real me is our spirit. Our souls give us personalities. And uh, we dwell in this body. And everything that we do on this earth uh, goes a long way to help either of these three components we are made up of. Hallelujah. And I want to mention some activities that we all engage in every day. Everyday physical activities that we engage in that profit the body, which is the container or the tent in which we dwell. Eating, food. Food is good. And then uh, we eat food every day. Activities like brushing our teeth and bathing. Or bathing. These 
these activities are things that we do every day. And the list goes on and on. And why and how do these activities profit us? It is because we do them every day. It is because we do them every day. Hallelujah. They are everyday little activities that we cannot live without. And the way they bless us is because we repeat them every day. And it is possible that somebody would say that food is not good, brushing our teeth is not good, or even bathing is not good. If you see somebody talking like that, you will, you will not agree with the person. And the only explanation to such an assertion will be that the person doesn't do it regularly or the person doesn't do it every day. Church, I came to tell us that the little things that we do for the benefit of our body are only useful because we do them every day. As good as brushing your teeth is, its goodness and its profit and benefit is in continuity. That if you brush today and you don't brush in the next four days, the first one seems useless. Hallelujah. Like food. You have breakfast, lunch, supper. They are all good. You eat today, you eat tomorrow, and eating is part of life. And eating is good. Food is good. But if you don't eat, you can say that food is not good. It means that the goodness of food or the profit in food is in eating. Like they say about the pudding, the sweetness is in the eating. Hallelujah. Like bathing. The list goes on and on. Even when you go to the hospital and they give you medicine, you are always given a prescription on how you should eat, you should, you should take it. The indication that morning, afternoon, evening, two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two in the evening, for seven days. And if you don't take it like that, as good as the medicine is, it will not profit you. Like the malaria dose that we take, you take it and in the eight hours you miss it, you disturb the efficacy of the drug. When we went to school, we know what happens to truants. The reason why the education that you have profited you is because you went almost every day or every day. Hallelujah. These activities are good and they profit us in the natural only because you do them every day. If you stop doing them or you do them once in a while, they will not benefit you. Hallelujah. Do you agree with me? So sometimes it is not about the duration or even the amount, but the discipline and the frequency that you do it. Now, the profit is in the continuity of the practice. That's all. Otherwise, any physical thing that we do does not profit us. And why am I saying all of this? Now, we have all started this year very well. And I like what I am seeing as a pastor right from 31st night through to today. All services have been packed. I have seen activity. I have seen commitment to work and department and service to the Lord. And we are all doing a lot of good things, including paying attention to our spirit and our spiritual lives. And I believe that in your private or personal lives also, you have made some resolutions and you are doing some very new things in a new way and uh, you are doing well. Now, there is something about good things. There is something about everything that is good and every activity that 
that prophets and that is what i have been telling you about the natural activities that they profit when we are able to continue and to do them hallelujah church as we have commenced this year i came to tell you that a time will come in the year all the good things or some of the good things that you have started doing you won't feel like doing them for a reason or for no reason for a reason or for no reason. I promise you, you will come to that place where you will not feel or you will not want to. The urge to do it will not be there. Why will it be so? Or why is it always so? First Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. For bodily exercise profits a little, Bodily exercise profits a little. Everything that we do, like sleep. Sleeping is good, but if you don't sleep, you fall sick. You say sleeping is not good. Like bathing and brushing our teeth and eating. All these things are, are good, are things that we do that benefit one component of our being, which is our body. And all the profit we get from there... The Bible says that it is little, including physical exercise. If you want to lose weight or you want to keep fit, exercise must be done daily. Sometimes they say that if you are not ready, don't go and try. Because if you go and try and you stop, what say I say, hallelujah. The prophet is in the continuity. Now, we see here that, but godliness is profitable for all things. Have, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Now, the activities that we are supposed to engage in to renew our mind when it's a component of our soul and to strengthen our spirit are the activities that is categorized here as godliness or things that we do that directly benefit our soul and our spirit. Hallelujah. Here we see that much profit comes from these activities. And usually in the beginning of every year, people focus on godliness or activities that build the, the spirit and the soul. And that is so good. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to continue with these activities because the health of your spirit and your soul determines the health of your body. Now, if somebody is not healthy emotionally, it will affect your body. The, God, the godly exercise or godliness profit for all things, but physical things that we do profit only little. And it is temporary. They help us live here on earth. And the gratifications we have in them are so temporary. You brush your teeth. You need to brush again tomorrow. Otherwise, it will not help you. And this, your teeth, it's helpful, it's helpful here on earth. You leave it in the grave. But there are activities that when we engage in church... They help us here on earth. They are profitable for all things. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22. Talking about the word of God. Reading the word of God and doing the word of God. Look at it. Look at it carefully. For they are life to those who find them. That is the word of God. They are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So reading the Bible and doing the word, loving the word and spending time with the word helps your spirit and even your flesh. Hallelujah. It is health to all their flesh. This year, if you want to stay healthy, in addition to exercise, and eating well and sleeping well, you need the word of God. 
that somebody who does not even exercise and does not even eat well, if you spend time with the word, there is some profit and assurance of some benefit even in the word. It means that spiritual activities profit more than the spirit. It even profits the body. Hallelujah. Godliness profits unto all. And there are things that we do here on earth that help us here on earth to survive the wiles of the enemy, to walk the walk with God, and also gives us eternal life and even crowns and benefits and rewards in heaven. And as we have all commenced the year, and I see all of us putting in effort to engage in this godliness, one surety about it is that at a point, you will not want to do it. And the reason why you do not want to do it, it is because it profits all, like in Timothy. It profits you too much. So there's a natural tendency in the flesh and Satan and the systems of this world are arranged such that our engagement in godliness are limited so that we will not get all the profit spiritually and physically. And so Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says that don't be weary. Listen, in doing good, in practicing godliness, a time will come that you will not want to do it. You realize that you have just stopped going to church. You realize that you have stopped reading the Bible. You just have stopped praying. You have stopped giving. You stopped a lot of things that you started the year with. Listen, it is the work of Satan that is ahead of all of us. And the Lord sent me to equip you with a word this morning that do not quench the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And just as physical things profit us when we continue to do them frequently or regularly, church, in godliness also, or the things that benefit our spirit, they also profit us in that regard. In continuity, Hallelujah. The way you have started this year, if you allow this message to sing with you and you guard it and you open your eyes and you are vigilant and you continue like this, you have no idea how you will look, how you will feel, and how you will be at the end of this year. I came to tell you to continue. First of all, with quiet time. With reading of the Bible, James, like our Bible read, our Bible reading said today, James chapter 1, verse 25. Concerning Bible reading or studying the word of God, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, listen, continue in it, continue in it. The word I want you to take from this verse, and the word you are taking home. Concerning reading your Bible, the devotion you have started reading is that you have to continue in it just like brushing your teeth. Just like taking any medicine. Just like doing any physical exercise. You look into it in January. February, you look into it. By July, you should be found looking into it. And your eyes and your gaze must be fixed on it. By October and by December, you shouldn't turn your eyes off. You need to continue in it. Some look, but they don't look at it often. Often, As good as reading the Bible is, just like brushing your teeth, if you don't do it often, it will not profit you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't do it often, it doesn't profit you. So, the way you have started, I've came to, I came to tell you that you will feel like reducing it. 
But when you feel like reducing, know that you have to continue in it. Hallelujah. And continues in it. Look and continue. And not a forgetful hearer and a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in all that he does. This year you'll be blessed in everything that you do. Amen. The way to achieve it is to continue looking into the way like you have started. And you have missed some already in the past 10 days. Don't worry. Go back to it. If you did it for just three days in the beginning of the year, go back to it and continue. There is grace available. Hallelujah. Concerning giving and loving people. The reason why we say continue is because you feel like not continuing. But when you don't, when you don't feel like continuing, continue. Because many times you are close to the reward. In Galatians, Paul said that you will reap if you don't get weary. You will reap. That one is assured. The only part you have to play is to beat yourself and to continue. Hallelujah. Concerning giving, Ecclesiastes chapter 6, sorry, chapter 11, the verse number 6. In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand. For you do not know which one will prosper. Either this or that, or both alike will be good. In the evening, sow your seed. In the evening, in the in the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, don't withhold your hand. In January, give. By March, don't stop giving. Hallelujah. First service, give. Second service, don't put your hand in your damn film. Don't withhold your hand. Tuesday, when you come, give. Liberty Hour, give. F F Sunday service, give. Every service, give. Give from January to December. I came to tell you to give and to give continually and don't go on a break because if you, you, if you go on a break, you may never know what will happen. Church, the goodness or the profit, the benefit in giving is in continuity. Don't say that I have given too much. Hallelujah. In the morning, give. In the evening, also give. Hallelujah. Let brotherly love continue. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. Brotherly love, now the chance, you know. The brotherly love that we have started with. Let it continue. We are encouraged here that it should continue because there will be a tendency and there are things that will happen that will want to stop it. But when those things happen, don't let it stop. Continue. Brotherly love, reading your Bible, giving our godliness and the practice of them Prophets unto all things. The Bible said that in this life and the life to come, if the things that profit our body, temporary, only in this life, we are able to do them continually, then I came to tell us that we can be wiser. We can be smarter. We should do well and we have what it takes to do anything continually. And we should add to these things we do daily reading the Bible and giving. Hallelujah. And loving people. Let it continue. Why would we be instructed that let it continue? Let it continue. Because something will want to stop it. Let it continue. It will profit us here and it will profit us there. If you know something that we are never profit to, uh -huh, and it also profit you there, why will you not do it? This year, 
let us be vigilant. And as we invest our time, and as we spend our days, let us be mindful of the things that profit for all, at all time, even to eternity, and the things that are temporal. Hallelujah. So in Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, when you do your charitable deed, when? Don't stop. When? It's not if. When you do your charitable deeds, Matthew 6, 3, when you do, when you do it, continue to do charitable deeds. Hallelujah. Let me add one activity that is godliness. And as a pastor, I've been so impressed so far with this one. It is attending church services. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. You will see concerning all these actions or activities of godliness that in it is an instruction for us to continue. And it is because there is a force that do not want us to continue. And it is because of the profit we get in it when we continue. Today you understand why it is difficult to do good things for a long time. And it is rather easy to, to keep practicing a bad habit. It is because of the profit we get in it. Look, look at going to church. Not forsaking. Not forsaking. Don't forsake it. Don't forsake what you have started here. If you are watching me online from any part of the world, it is good to watch online. God bless you. Keep watching. But that is not enough. The will of God is that you do not forsake the gathering. We are gathered at Pig Farm Junction in Accra, West Africa, Ghana. You are invited to be here physically. You are invited to be here physically. If not any church close to you, the will of God is to be present. Hallelujah. Accept something tangible. That will be a reason that God will accept in heaven one day. Should keep you in the house, house once in a while to watch online. God bless you for watching. But church, let us not, not assembling ourselves together. It's a sin. God there's an instruction that we should not forsake it. Hallelujah. Because there is profit in this gathering. There is fellowship. There are a lot of things happening here that you do not know, that I even do not know. We are being ministered to. Something is happening to your spirit. And something is happening not just to your spirit. It will transfer to your body. What you are sitting here doing has benefit in heaven and here on earth. In the course of the year, you want to fight and stop anything that will prevent you from coming regularly. The goodness in coming to church and coming for services is in continuity. That's why he said, don't forsake. So don't forsake it. Hallelujah. Don't forsake me here any Tuesday. Don't forsake me here any Friday or Sunday. Make sure that you are always present because there is profit in it. Hallelujah. Another thing that you want to continue is prayer. You look at the man called Job in the, in the Old Testament. In Job chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible said that he, he, he prayed for his family daily, regularly, every morning. Regular. The Bible said this he did regularly. The good thing about prayer is also in regularity, frequency, and doing it all the time. Like I said concerning sleep, eating, uh, brushing our teeth and bathing. One can say that it is not good. Just because they do it once in a while, it won't profit you. Do you know the power of prayer? Have you experienced it for yourself? Do you have a testimony attached to prayer that you believe in prayer? Church, it is in doing it regularly. And instead of our Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 5, verse 16, that he himself withdrew often. Pray often. Often. Pray your benefit as if you do it often. Some people have said, I don't believe that 
that statement is so one way, one legged. They say that too much of everything is bad. It's one of the most popular wrong statements. Too much of prayer is not bad. Say it well. Too much of prayer and not working. When you say too much of everything is bad, too much loving is not bad. Then God is the baddest person. He loves us too much. Nobody is badder than God. He's doing something too much. He's too, me too much mercy is bad. Is that what you are saying? I don't, understand. I don't say those statements. Too much prayer is not bad. Jesus did it often. This year, pray often. I know you are praying now. Continue. Hallelujah. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, pray without ceasing. This year, pray without ceasing. I didn't know say without ceasing because you want to cease. Why? Too much profit. Sometimes you feel depressed. Sometimes you feel anxious. Sometimes you just feel down. When you pray, you are energized. Something happened to your spirit. It affects your face. And your face strengthens up. Your face straightens up. Now, what the amba? Then the amba. It profits spirit and flesh. Pray. Continue to pray. Don't let anything stop you from praying this year. The year is long. We have 356 more days. But there is grace available for us to continue. Fasting. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Moreover, when you fast, when, when, fast often, because unbelief is present with us. Unbelief is ever present with us. So fast often. It's good. One of the good ways we have started this year is we have fasted. We have fasted and we have prayed. It is not enough for the year. Eh? Because for the many physical things that you do for the benefit of your body, you have done several of them already in the 10 days in this year. So the one fasting is not enough. Be ready for more. Your personal ones and the corporate ones. Fasting. Profit us when we do it often. Hallelujah. Otherwise, you say fasting is not good. Otherwise, you say, you say that coming to church is not good. You say that giving is not good. You can say that these things are not good. The reason is, by the time you are saying that you are discouraged, you are this, it's not good, and ne, 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 ne. Uh, my only question would be, how often do you do it? Hallelujah. I'll ask you that, is eating good? You say yes. Say, how often? You eat three times a day. Don't quench their spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 19. This year, rejoice always. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Verse 19. Don't quench their spirit. That is what I came to tell you this morning. Don't quench their spirit. Don't quench their spirit. Don't quench their spirit. You see, let me say something that is controversial, but so true. It is not sin that quenches the spirit. Sin cannot be quenched. The spirit cannot be quenched by sin. Sin is dealt with. We are dead to sin. If, if sin quenches the spirit, then we have quenched. The spirit is, is, has been quenched long because every day we sin. Who is without sin here? As righteous as we are, who is without sin? Then the spirit is quenched. But the Bible said that rejoicing always, not sometimes. You want to keep the spirit aflame, be happy. Be happy, rejoice, be glad. Jesus is on your side. God is on your side this year. What can make you rejoice more than this? Rejoice. Hallelujah. Give thanks always. Give thanks always. When you rejoice always and you are full of thanks, 
and you are full of prayer, the spirit is awake, it's alive, it's revived, it is not quenched. The absence of these activities quenches the spirit. The spirit that you have prayed all year say and lead you, that the spirit of God should lead you, that you should be sent to the spirit, that God should order your steps, you, it will be done by the spirit, so don't quench it. Your spirit, you don't quench the body. You eat every day. You brush your teeth every day. You bath every day. So don't quench the spirit. It loves this environment. Bring it here at least three times a week. Pray at least one hour a day. And give. Don't quench the spirit. Now let me ask you a question. Can you imagine if we practice the things that I have mentioned like the way we bath and eat and sleep? Can you imagine if you pray like that? If you give like that? If you give like the way you die? Every time you eat, you find somebody and give something to you. Like every time you brush your teeth, it's, it's a demand for you to be good to somebody. If we did these things that you did, if you came to church the way you use the washroom, what if you prayed like the way you brush your teeth? What if you use a quarter of your sleeping hours to pray every day because you sleep every day? Can you imagine how your life will be if you practice godliness even a quarter to the extent that you practice physical or bodily exercise? Hey, Nanka, the plan that God has for you that like, if I think like someone like Clement, like what God wants you to be in the next 20 years, you can be it in five years. Hallelujah. Now let me turn the thing. What if we practiced brushing our teeth, using the washroom, and what? Eating like the way we practice godliness. Huh? What if our attitude towards church was like our attitude when we were in school? Your attitude towards coming to church, if it was the same like your attitude towards lectures and going to class. Nanka school no baby. And Karuzo Snoopo who we school koji. Eh? Because you know the results. You know, and we don't need them to tell you. You know, there's a certain life you can live in school. You don't need your results. It is here. Hallelujah. You go for it. Coming to church can and will profit you more than all that all your teachers did for you. How many of you believe me? Yes. But the reason why we haven't got the most out of coming to church is because we haven't been frequent. Eh? What if you ate like the way you read the Bible? So every time you say no Bible, no breakfast, you do it for one week. Because everything, who has tried it before? No Bible, no breakfast. NB, NB. Who has tried it before? Eh? Hey, nobody has tried it before. Oh, two people here. How was it? No Bible, no breakfast. Eh? Eh? No giving, no brushing of teeth. Eh? Eh? No prayer, no bathing. No prayer, no bathing. Eh? You can do no prayer, no bathing. At least, each time, one thing I do every day, you can pray in the bathroom. If you have that law, God didn't make it for you, make it for yourself. God bless you. It's a good law. That if you pray before you go and bath, why can't you do that? Or at least, the 10th or 15 or 5 minutes that you used to bath, some people use 30 minutes. I don't know. Sometimes, <laughs> hmm. 
I, I don't know. I wish you can explain the activities or whatever. I don't know. But uh, 30 minutes. I, I know people do that. I mean, I, I don't take that people for serious. And your body too. I mean, hurry, cry about five minutes. What's wrong with you? Hey, this is flesh and blood. No matter what you do, to smell. That's why you use deodorant. Because the odor is already there. Eh? It's not odorant. It is the odor. The odor is there. It's flesh and blood. It's just smell. Don't waste time bathing. Instead of spend a long time bathing, one bath. Divide it and bath two times a day. I don't dry beef. Sometimes the way some of us, me, I have three types of bathing. If you need help, come and see me. Come and come for consultation. I have three types of bath. My wife will tell you. I have three types. Depending on the time and where I'm going and the circumstances, and sometimes the mood. You have only one type of bathing. Be smart. I know the guys are smiling. The guys are say so you are happy. How many of you have more than one type? Can you have one type? Uh, uh, Gifty has more than one type. The ladies who have one, see Gifty when we close. Naira, you can have one type of bathing. It's not a blue generic. If you do a blue re repent. Repent or tuba. It's not a blue you know. It's complete buffing, you no. Know. Vero, it's buffing, you no. Know. Complete. Hallelujah. What, 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 what if we practiced our, our spirituality like that and we, we changed it? You see, there's something about the mercies of God. You see, in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, the goodness of the mercies of God is because it's renewed every morning. Of what good is mercy if it is not every morning? Eh? The mercies of God, the reason why it is good is because every morning is renewed. The reason why bathing is good is because you bath every morning. Prayer will be good and to profit you if you do it every morning. Simple. Coming to church is good. It will profit you if, you if you come the whole year, not January. So you see, let us divide the year into morning, afternoon, evening. January to April is morning. Uh, uh, May to September is afternoon. Niakano, uh, evening. You know, even brushing of teeth. You know, how many of you know that we are supposed to do it twice a day? I know that most of you do it once. How many of you do it twice? They don't raise your hand. All the time or sometimes? All the time. Yeah. I see. All the time. All the time, twice a day, raise your hand. Every time. Hey. So look, you people, look, look. Quick, look. Everybody is not like you. Oh, raise your hand. It will encourage. It will encourage some people. Oh, but those of you don't feel bad if you did once. It's not a sin, man. Hey, but I, I have twice every day. All the time. Charlie, some of you add it to your new year. It's okay. But I'm pasting on the boy deal. Hallelujah. Church, this morning I came to tell you something very simple about success. Success. Yeah, success. Watch me. Everybody knows how to do to be successful. Everybody knows. Like, at least Christianity. You know that if you want to go read your Bible, pray every day. They are, if you don't know, if you go on Google right now, how to be a billionaire, it is there. How they are called motivational. You go to the libraries, you get books on how to be rich. How to be a million? Who doesn't know how to be a million? It's simply by saving. Do you know that if you start saving even one CD a day, in the next 20 years, you'll be a millionaire? You don't know. One CD a day, you'll be a millionaire. If you don't know, take it from me. Go and see any, 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 you know those dead to me and his people? 
the multinational gurus who they can let you go and don't mind them all. They will give you pressure. They will say that you are, if, you, if you sleep eight hours a day, then, then, then don't mind them. One day I'll, I'll deal with them. Their night was made for sleep. But you know, there's something about success. Everybody knows what to do. Who doesn't know how to do be successful? Who doesn't know? Everybody knows. But you know something? Very few people practice it once in a while. The reason why we are not successful is because we know it. It's not enough to know. Very few people practice it once in a while. And some people practice it for a while. And they stop. But to be successful is to know what to do. And be committed to it and do it regularly. That's all. That's the secret about success. is consistency. I'm telling you. That's why disciplined people are successful people. Right? One of the reasons why God is the greatest that is alive or that we know and will ever know is because of how disciplined he is. Eh? If he says it, he will do it. If he won't do it, he won't say it. Nobody can keep his word more than God. And he's consistent in all his ways. What he said before time, when time started till now, he hasn't changed it. He's still consistent. He's regular. It's a nature that he has given us. To be consistent. He lives in you. He is Alpha and his Omega. Allow him to live through you. That when you have started in January, Alpha, by Omega, December, you'll be doing it. That is, that is the greatest thing you need to be successful, discipline. That's success. I'm telling you. That, that I've said that if you say one city a day, you'll be, you'll be a millionaire. 20 years time, everybody here should be a millionaire because I've told you. But not everybody will do it. I don't even know whether anybody will do it. The thing about success. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. Do you pray? Yes. When and how? And for how long? Can you plot a graph on your listen? Plot a graph on your prayer life and put it on the wall. You be you 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 have, when you are talking about prayer, you can't talk. Can you plot a graph this year? When I was going up, one of the men. Some of you, if you yield yourself for me to, to personally, at my personal level, disciple you, you will grow in three months. Because how I was trained, one of my shepherds bought, a, bought four graphs book. One for my prayer life, one for... So when I read the Bible, then I plot day and time. Monday, read the Bible for one hour, you plot. So when it's coming, if you don't read, you have nothing to plot. Your, your Bible, your prayer life is like this. Uh, you are talking about prayer and the efficacy and the power of prayer. Just listen. You can't talk some. But prayer is powerful. Oh. Coming to church is fantastic. Oh. But it's perfect. It is reserved for them that know how to do it consistently. Hallelujah. That is it. That is why in all the verses we have read, don't quench. Continue in it. Always. Don't cease. Don't forsake. You can't complain about the results if you practice it in a manner that does not give results. I pray that this year you'll be regular and consistent in all that you do. I pray that you'll be regular and you'll be consistent. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you for coming. If you join us online, God bless you so much for joining us. I've been your pastor, your preacher for this morning, Nanaya Trinibakudia. I am at Pick from Junction. You're welcome to. I'd like to have a word with you one of these days. Why don't you get interactive on our social media platforms and make a day to visit us one of these days. And I'd like to meet you after any of our services you choose to join. It's about time we give unto the Lord and you want to give and give well. There are digital giving options available. If you are in-house, you can give digitally. If you are watching us online too, 
you are permitted to give, you can also you and we love you because you first loved us we thank you and we bless you for who you are unto us we thank you for grace to do this word that we will continue in this word we will not quench the spirit we thank you that when this word has come grace for us to be consistent to be reliable and dependable like you in Jesus name amen can we have another your friend is saying here? Or the one is okay. Let's please stand. And with a joyful heart from the back, let's bring our offerings unto the Lord. <laughs>